Sitting between the sea and the buildings, he enjoyed painting the sea's portrait. But just as children imagine a prairie's merely silence, he expected his subject to rush up the sand and, seizing a brush, plaster its own portrait on the canvas. So there was never any paint on his canvas until the people who lived in the buildings put him to work. Try using the brush as a means to an end. Select for a portrait something less angry and large, and more subject to a painter's moods or perhaps a prayer. How could he explain to them his prayer that nature, not art, might absorb the canvas? He chose his wife for a new subject, making her vast like ruined buildings, as if forgetting itself the portrait had expressed itself without a brush. Slightly encouraged, he dipped his brush in the sea, murmuring a heartfelt prayer. My soul, when I paint this next portrait, let it be you who wrecks the canvas. The news spread like wildfire through the buildings. He had gone back to the sea for his subject. Imagine a painter crucified by his subject, too exhausted to even lift his brush. He provoked some artists leaning from the buildings to malicious mirth. We haven't a prayer now of putting ourselves on canvas or getting the sea to sit for a portrait. Others declared it a self-portrait. Finally, all indications of a subject begin to fade, leaving the canvas perfectly white. He put down the brush at once a howl and was also a prayer arose from the overcrowded building. They tossed him the portrait from the tallest of buildings, and the sea devoured the canvas and the brush as though his subject had decided to remain a prayer.